So many of you have reached out to let me know how the podcast has changed your small business, and I love hearing how. But now I want to offer you even more transformation. I spent the past year streamlining and focusing my own business, and I've had amazing results. I went from feeling constantly overwhelmed to gaining full control in my balloon business, working less and earning more. I condensed everything I learned into a three-part video course with more than two hours of instruction where I share all I know about putting healthy limits in your business in order to best serve your clients, how to use automation and standardization as core principles in your customer experience and sales process, and how to eliminate tasks with the power of outsourcing to remote subcontractors. I call this my laser-focused framework. I've even created a list of trusted partners and included my pricing catalog template that you can customize and use straight away, including permission to use my photos, because I want this course to help you start streamlining now. I'm living proof that this framework works. If it works for me in my balloon business, it can work for you. I work a full-time job, I run a balloon business as a solopreneur, I have a toddler, and I produce this podcast every week. I have a lot going on, but because I apply this framework to every decision in my balloon business, things hum along pretty effortlessly. If you want to say goodbye to stress and build a business that is laser-focused, click the link in the show notes to join me. Hi, and welcome to The Bright Balloon, a podcast where I'm sharing bright ideas for your balloon business. My name is Sarah Meyer, and I'm a balloon business owner like you, and I love the creative side of what I do, but I really love the business side, which seems to be the part where most people struggle. So I'm here to help. Each week, I'm bringing you an episode full of bite-sized tips you can use to make tiny improvements to your business. I want you to make more money, eliminate stress, and learn along with me as we grow our creative businesses together. Welcome to The Bright Balloon. Hello and welcome to this episode. I am going to keep this one brief and it is going to be another book review. And this is a great book to review because it's written like a cookbook. It doesn't have to be read front to back. Um, You can kind of flip around and it's a lot of strategies about making time. So that is the title of the book. It's called Make Time. I will link it in the show notes. You'll definitely want to grab a copy. Um, And I was a little bit hesitant to dive into this one because both of the authors are like tech bros. Like I was worried it was going to be very like hyper scheduling and squeezing everybody bit of efficiency out of your day and using robots and apps, which I'm sort of into, but not in terms of like running my entire life. However, I was pleasantly surprised. It actually is a very easy strategy that they suggest. And then, like I said, this book reads like a cookbook. So after the original like framework that they outline, it's just a bunch of strategies of how to get your time back, basically, like areas where you're wasting time, things where you can save time, um, different strategies of working. And this idea that you just you want to test out all different strategies that work for you. So I'm going to talk about what their framework is, and then I am going to talk about a few of the strategies that stood out to me that I am um, implementing and testing out. Ballooncoach.com has been a sponsor of The Bright Balloon since pretty much day one because like this podcast, Balloon Coach focuses on growing your balloon business. I personally love Balloon Boss Mastermind because it is a group that constantly challenges me to grow my business, think about things in new ways, and I'm able to ask questions to other balloon business owners who usually have more experience than I do. From monthly webinars to in-person events and downloadable resources, BalloonCoach.com really has it all. So check out the link in the show notes wherever you're listening to learn more about BalloonCoach.com. So again, the book is Make Time. It is linked in the show notes if you'd like to order a copy. And um, they kind of outline this framework. And the key concept is every day you should identify a highlight. So the highlight can be anything. It can be something you want to do, something you're passionate about, something you have to do. Um, Maybe it's something really urgent. Basically, it's the same concept of like eating the frog, if you've heard of that, like doing the thing that you hate doing the most. You usually try to do that first in the morning just to get it over with. Um, but this is a little bit of a different take on this. It's, it's suggesting that like instead of doing the worst thing first, 
you should figure out the one thing you actually really want to do and then schedule the rest of your day around that. So it's not, it's not so much of an idea of like getting the bad stuff out of the way. It's like highlighting the good stuff and then working everything and structuring everything around that. And it doesn't have to be like a grand event. It could be like today I really want to take a walk because it's warm outside. So maybe I'm going to look at my schedule and I'm going to take my walk between noon and one. And then I'm going to schedule the rest of my day around that. Because if you don't, like I'll speak for myself, I end up working through my lunch break just to get one more thing done. And then all of a sudden it's the end of the day and I didn't do something as simple as taking a walk. So they, they talk about this highlight as like, the starting point for your entire day. And I'm, I'm really guilty of going through an entire day. And then I look back and it's like, not only do I not really know what I did today, but like, it certainly wasn't anything I wanted to do. Like I just, I worked on my computer. I did my job. I drove home. Now I'm having dinner and yeah, that was it. I just kind of like going through the motions. So I like this idea of setting that intention first thing in the morning and then framing your entire day around that. So then their second step, um, they call laser, which, you know, I like, (laughs) it's the name of my course. I was like, wait a minute, did I copy this from them? And then it was like, well, no, I've never read this book. That's not possible. But their take on laser is again, kind of the same as mine, that laser beam focus, but they place that focus on the highlight. So if you've already established your highlight, then you need to be laser focused on that one thing that you're going to do. So it could be something simple like taking a walk, but I'm going to stay laser focused on that. So in the morning when I'm working hard, it's like, but you know what? At noon, I'm going to close my computer and take my walk. And I am going to basically play defense. So they talk about how the highlight is like your offense. That's when you're in control. You're like, this is what I'm going to do today. I need to make sure it happens. And then when you get to the laser step of the framework, that is staying focused and playing defense. So like, I'm not going to take a meeting over my lunch break. I'm not going to go drop off my dry cleaning. I'm not going to go grocery shopping because I have the time to do it. Like I am going to prioritize this highlight above everything else and make sure it happens. And I'm playing defense. So this was the part where, um, I started getting really interested because they start offering some strategies on how to play defense, which I love like the, the action items, the things that I can actually do. And there's kind of two things they mentioned, two traps that people fall into. One is the busy bandwagon. So just kind of this idea that like it's, you can glorify being busy. So I feel like I'm guilty of that. Like, Oh my gosh, I'm so busy. I did so much today, but like, that's actually not something to brag about. Um, because if we get in that mindset of being busy, we just, we kind of stay there. And then having an hour off on your lunch break to go for a walk feels like weird or inappropriate. Like you should be using that time to do something you really have to do. Um, so that is a trap they talk about is just like, don't fall into the busy bandwagon. And then this other one, which I totally, I just, I love this analogy. They call it the infinity pool. And they talk about how technology has been designed to trap us in these infinity pools. So anything on your phone or on the computer, anything where you just can scroll and scroll and scroll literally forever, um, that is what they call an infinity pool. So Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, um, like news sites. I've this week I've been like that with this Ukraine, um, the the Russian war. I go on to every news site and I just read every single article and scroll and scroll and scroll. Like, I don't know. There's something like if I feel like I know all the information, I'll somehow be able to help. I don't know. It's all so terrible. But there's never not another article. Like I never get to the end of the web page and it's like, that's all, that's all there is. There's always something else to click on that leads me down another rabbit hole. So it's like these infinity pools will just suck your time forever as long as you allow them to. And, and we all know how that goes on like Facebook and Instagram. Like there's just always more. And that is a huge waste of your time. And they argue just by taking those apps off your phone, you will reclaim so much of your time. So I'm actually testing this one. I took Facebook and uh, Pinterest off my phone, which those are kind of my go-to, you know, I'm bored and I have a minute, so I'm just going to open these apps aimlessly. Um, So I took those off. I didn't pull the trigger on Instagram yet because Instagram, in my opinion, really only works on your phone and I do a lot of business on Instagram. So I kept that one on for now, but I'm going to intentionally try to not not depend on that Um, because that's another thing they mentioned that 
if we are depending on our own willpower, like, oh, I'm just not going to open that app, we are absolutely going to fail. So they said, just remove the temptation and you'll be way more successful. Because yeah, like if I have five minutes, I'm not going to actually open my computer and log into Facebook to kill five minutes. Whereas I would grab my phone and just scroll. And I've noticed myself doing this like when my daughter is around and I just, I don't want to go down that path. I feel like I need to be more present in her life. Um, so I am definitely cutting back on social media. Um, especially you figure Facebook, like if someone needs me, they'll send me a message and I'll get that. Um, and I can, I'm going to talk more about this cause they give like a ton of strategies about like limiting our notifications on our phone. So I'll come back to this. Um, but the next step that I also thought was really interesting, again, I was really, I was really worried this was all going to be like technology strategies, but their third step is this idea of energy of like focusing on what you eat and working out and getting good sleep. And that if you focus on those things that actually make your body and your brain perform better, you will be way more productive than if you have a thousand apps on your phone and a to-do list and a strategy. And like, again, this idea that like willpower is going to make it easier. It's just not like the easiest way they suggest is to take care of your body because your brain just will function at a higher level. So you'll be able to basically put out less effort to do more work if you're just taking care of your your sleep and your your health um and it just makes your brain function at a better at a better level so i appreciated that um and then their final step is reflect so this idea again going back to their cookbook analogy like they created this book not like step one step two step three step step four it's like here's 80, I think there's 82 strategies that you can use. So they just say like, try out the strategies and then at the end of the day, reflect on how it went. Like, did that help you be productive or was, was that not good? Did that feel good? Do you, do you want to go back to this one? And this idea that like, what works for me might not work for you or what works for me right now might not work for me a different time of the year or something like that. So this idea of reflecting on these strategies and actually taking note of what's working and what's not and trying to tweak. So again, I really like the book because there were some strategies that I was just like, I'm not going to do that. Um, and I could, I could flip through. It wasn't like I was missing like a chapter of the book. It was just like, nah, I'm not, I'm not super into that. Or that's not super relevant. Like some of the strategies would be more relevant to me at my day job and less relevant to you if you run your own business. Or like there were some strategies that I could totally see using in my balloon business, but like I don't have that much autonomy at my day job. So I liked that there were a million different things to test out and try. So I want to talk about the things I am going to try. And then hopefully um, you can get your hands on a copy and then I would love to hear what you are also trying to implement. So I, I already mentioned the um, like the apps, the social media apps, because I'm so guilty of falling into that endless scroll, those um, infinity pools. So they go in like they go hardcore on on social media and notifications and phones, which again, I thought like these tech guys would be like all into all that stuff. And they're like anti, which to me is like, oof, if they're the people who created this stuff and they're taking it off their phones, then like it must be really, <laughs> really bad for our brains. So I eliminated some of those apps off my phone. But what I also did is the ones that I kept. So like Instagram. I turned off all the notifications. So like I, if you message me on Instagram, I won't see it until I log into Instagram. Uh, um, Even, even some text like chains that I'm in, I muted them so that I'm not getting every notification, especially like group texts can be a killer. Um, Like, oh, my mom and my sister, like (laughs) they'll sometimes text each other like 15 times before I even see that the text is happening. And like, that's okay. So turning off notifications on your phone is another big one because when you're sitting at your desk trying to focus and you're constantly seeing your phone light up like it's just it's awful um I don't think this was in the book but this was something I noticed I got an Apple watch I actually was able to get it for free with credit card points so I was just like okay so I got an Apple watch and it buzzes my wrist every time I get a text every time I get a notification so I just put it in a drawer you guys I can't I don't know if you are Apple watch users and lovers like let me know But like, I felt like I was getting electric shocks every single time I got a notification. And I was like, this cannot, this cannot be healthy for me. I'm having a physical reaction every single time I get a notification on my phone. Like it was, it was not, not a good look for me. So I took off the watch, I put it in the drawer. I'm going to wait and try to just make it into like a pedometer over the summer or something for exercise. But, um, the notifications for me are going to be huge. 
The other thing that they talked about quite a bit, um, that I'm not going to get super into because you should buy the, buy the book to like totally understand it. But this idea of like doing a sprint and this definitely does have like a Silicon Valley tech background, this idea of basically plowing through a project like today, this is all I'm going to do. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to write the copy. I'm going to record the videos. I'm going to put it online. I'm going to hit publish and I'm going to be done. Um, or like your website, like today, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to update this page, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to upload the photos, this and hit publish and be done. So this idea of like, dedicating a large amount of time to one task and getting it completely done. And I, I relate really well to that. I am not much of a do a little bit each day type of person. Like I need to focus and like, be completely in the zone and just like really hammer out a project. So they give some tips on how to do these sprints. Now, granted, the part where I struggle, it's like at my day job, I don't have the power to do this. Like I can't command everybody's time to like power through and get one project done. I think that would be really beneficial, but unfortunately, I don't have that kind of pull, but I do have that kind of pull in my balloon business. And I think sometimes we have these to-do lists with like 30 different little tasks, but really if it was like, okay, all these other tasks are going to go on the back burner and I am just going to get my website updated, or I'm just going to get 17 hats up and going, or maybe today I'm just going to sort my balloons. I think it's like when you're trying to do a little bit of a lot, uh, I think that's really hard. So they encourage this idea of sprinting through projects. The number one question I receive is where do I order my balloons? And that's why I'm excited to tell you about having a party wholesale. Not only do I want to order from great people who really know the balloon industry, but I want a nice selection of products and a really good website. They have it all. Not only is their website easy to use, but it also has updated quantities on all of the products. So you know that what you're ordering is what you're going to get. They have super fast shipping. And even though they're in New York and I'm in Wisconsin, I always get my orders in just a few days. So check out having a party wholesale in the show notes, wherever you're listening for your next order and make sure to tell them the Bright Balloon Podcast sent you. There's 82 things that you can do in here. But the last one that they talk about is, um, again, it's just kind of personal for me, but something I'm just so guilty of, is like eliminating those distractions around sleep. So different different techniques, and these might not be relevant to you, but for me it was like... um, getting ready for bed like two hours before you actually want to go to sleep and turning off blue, you know, like blue light, like screens. Or if you're like me, I like watch TikTok until I fall asleep and literally pass out at like midnight. Um, Just the idea of going to bed earlier, the idea of faking the sunset. So like your lights are going to get dim and you're going to kind of like settle in. Like I'm, I'm not a great sleeper. I go to bed late cause I'm a night owl. And now my daughter's in a phase where she wakes up in the middle of the night. And like, I'm starting to really, really feel it during the day. Um, so I think this idea of just prepping myself to, again, like kind of take care of my body so that I'm automatically functioning at a higher level, I think will do me a lot of good. Uh, and there were a million other really practical, really doable tips in here, but I'm not just going to go through and like read the entire book. So I am focusing on getting off social media and eliminating those distractions, especially as we get into the summer when balloons for me like really pick up. Um, I, I can't afford to be wasting an hour scrolling on, on social media. Plus I have like three other episodes about Instagram and how that can do like really, you know, hard stuff to your brain, like seeing constant comparison of your work to other people's work and seeing that everyone else is so much busier than you or seems so much more successful. It's all an illusion. (laughs) So I'm okay with not filling my mind um, with those ideas. So I'm going to try to cut back on the aimless scrolling. So that has been my quick uh, book review. I loved it. I love this book. Uh, It's called Make Time. It's linked in the show notes. Grab your copy. And then real quick before I sign off, I wanted to um, kind of throw this out there. These book reviews I love, but they're they're hard. It's hard to review a 200-page book in a 15-minute podcast. So I'm thinking about starting to do the book reviews on the Patreon and do a chapter a week. Um, 
and go through it that way. Again, no commitments. I'm not, I'm not like committing to this or anything. I'm just thinking about it. So if you are in the Patreon, let me know if that's something that you would be into. It might be a little bit more practical and a bit more useful if we all kind of go through the books together, like a little book club. Um, yeah, let me know your feedback. I would love to hear, and I will see you next week for another episode that wraps up this week's episode. Thank you so much for listening. As always, I tried to keep it bright and light in a few minutes or less. If you wish there were more episodes, you're in luck. You can join us in our Patreon group for as little as $3 a month for brand new minisodes uploaded every Sunday. Click the link in the show notes to join.